So you've decided to emulate your games on a PC and you have a PC CRT. You don't have 15 kHz capability, so how will you get the proper 240p appearance with scan lines? You search online for solutions and probably what you first come across is 240p 120hz. This doubles the hertz of 240p to raise the horizontal scan rate to 31 kHz, allowing it to be displayed on a PC CRT which usually have minimums of about 30 kHz. It sounds like a great solution, right? Wrong. There's many issues with this avenue and a clearly better alternative. I will show in this video why 240p 120Hz is a mistake that never should have spread into widespread usage and declare what developers and content creators should use, implement, and recommend instead going forward. What could possibly be wrong with 240p 120Hz, right? It creates native scan lines just like an actual 15 kHz signal. Also, isn't higher refresh rate always better anyway? Well, to understand this, we need to explain a part of display motion science. I'll link to my full video on display motion science here when I've uploaded it. But I'll briefly explain the part I need to in this video. An NTSC CRT strobes in the neighborhood of 60 times per second when displaying console games. And console game FPS from the entire 2D era was almost always 60. This means that one strobe was made per frame. This fortuitously led to games being displayed with extremely low display motion artifacts. What happens when we increase display refresh rate to 120 hertz? Then each frame is strobed twice. This shows up as a double image and it looks extremely similar to how the games look when displayed on an unstrobed LCD or other sample and hold display. It's not exactly reverting to LCD motion, but it is pretty close. So, 240p 120Hz ruins the original motion of the games. Why would anyone use it? Well, some of the more motion educated people in my audience will be yelling at the screen right now about software BFI. Let's go over that. To return to an effective refresh rate of 60Hz, we can blank out every other frame with something called software BFI. This fixes the problem, right? Well, yeah, in theory. Unfortunately, in practice, all software BFI in emulators is based on the frames, not the hertz. That means if you have any deviation from a perfect locked 60 FPS with VSync on, you will have the flicker rate going all over the place. This causes discomfort, and it goes without saying that it ruins the gaming experience. This can happen with any core in RetroArch, even on the best machine due to random performance variants but some cores will consistently have the issue regardless of settings or system state, such as the N64 core, Mupin64 plus Next. Also, only RetroArch, GroovyMame, and a few other emulators have built-in software BFI. What if I want to use something else? The fact that these issues exist should beg the question, isn't there another way to get a perfect 240p on my PC CRT without messing with frames or hertz? Luckily for everyone, there is. There's a much better solution. Let's talk about it. Just use scanline shaders. Now I know what you're thinking, but Eric, scanline shaders are fake. What about my native scanlines? Really? Who put that idea in your head? Scanline shaders just remove lines or pixels from existence on the vertical axis. They produce the exact same result as natively scanning that resolution on that monitor, with the exception that the total luminance is reduced, which also happens with BFI. Still clinging to your mythos? Here's some comparison pics. Not good enough? Here's an ultra close-up macro shot with 240p 120Hz and BFI and 480p 60Hz plus scan lines lined up with each other. You can't tell me that's not identical. Don't be ridiculous. So, this looks identical, introduces no motion issues, doesn't need perfect performance to work properly. Some more benefits over software BFI. Number one, you can customize the scanline thickness to your liking, so you're not stuck with 50% luminance loss and scanlines thicker than a high-end BVM. Number two, it's compatible with every emulator and every game, as long as it uses modern graphics APIs, thanks to Reshade and other shader injectors. Now, some of you might be asking right now, come on, aren't there some situations where 240p 120Hz might be advantageous? Yeah, there are two notable exceptions. Number one, games with an FPS lock of below 50 FPS. 
CRT strobe at a minimum of around 47 FPS. So if a game has an FPS minimum of, for example, 20 FPS, in the case of Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, or 30 FPS, Metal Slug, and most early 3D console games, there's not a strong reason to be strobing at 60 Hz over 120 Hz. It's not going to be a very significant visual difference. So, in this case, 240p 120Hz with no BFI offers more luminance than using scanline shaders and less flicker with no downside. Number two, modern retro games with no FPS cap or an FPS cap of 120. In the case that you're playing a modern retro game with an FPS cap above 60 and you want to display it in 240p, obviously, 240p 120Hz or even 160Hz or whatever your monitor's max vertical is, is a great solution for you. Other than these two cases, 240p 120Hz shouldn't ever be used again. Please, take this video and share it to all your retro gaming circles. If you include 240p 120Hz modes or software BFI in your software or hardware, I'm looking at you Mr. Devs and everyone involved with SwitchRes, Groovy Arcade, or other CRT emulation software, add disclaimers or hide the 120Hz modes behind submenus. Together we can undo this huge, widely proliferated mistake. Thanks for watching and game on!